Today in Across the Fence, the messy subject of trash. We're going to go inside a state-of-the-art recycling facility and learn how the University of Vermont is leading the way when it comes to reducing trash and increasing recycling. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Trash is indeed a messy subject, but the old adage of out of sight, out of mind no longer applies. Reduce, reuse, recycle is the mantra and one that the University of Vermont takes seriously. Across the Fence's Rebecca Gollin tells us more. Recycling is big at the University of Vermont. Collection areas are set up around campus for everything from garbage and recycling to compost in these techno trash bins. The UVM community is encouraged not only to dispose of their waste properly, but to use less in the first place. Over the past, say, five years, we have reduced the overall amount of solid waste on the campus that's going to the landfill. Um, at the same time, we have increased our campus population. So, um, in a sense, the amount of waste that's generated per capita has declined. And, for example, this, this past year, um, we sent 1,400 tons of material to the landfill. Five years ago, we sent 1,800 tons, so we've had about a 20% reduction in waste over five years. I believe that the vendor that takes the, the grease for the biodiesel will handle that, but I would need to Erica that. Spiegel is the solid waste and recycling manager for UVM. She says that over the same time frame, UVM captured a steady amount for recycling, sending 550 tons of material last year to the Chittenden Solid Waste District's materials recovery facility. When I look at the numbers and I say, wow, how in five years did we eliminate 400 tons of solid waste from the way we do business at the university, I can't point to any one thing. And, and a lot of people are looking for, what is that one thing that you did? And the real story is it's not one thing, it's a lot of little things. And it's not just me and my department, it's sort of the whole way of thinking and the whole culture within the university. UVM has taken a number of steps to reduce waste. Peer-to-peer -peer education plays a major role in the university's efforts. This waste sort in 2008 revealed that the largest portion of trash from the UVM Davis Center was potentially compostable items, including uneaten food and some packaging. Removing trays from the dining halls last year led to a significant decrease in the amount of food waste on campus. Other steps include eliminating the publishing of an internal phone book, encouraging students not to buy bottled water, and using vendors for office supplies who deliver their goods in reusable plastic bins. The solid waste and recycling team keeps busy, picking up regular trash and recycling, as well as more unusual items that can be hard to get rid of, like old furniture and electronic waste. There are over 140 buildings on the campus. Um, we have a crew of three full-time employees that probably half of their job is to go around and pick up the materials from anywhere between 40 to 50 locations per day. They operate Monday through Friday, and they deliver the material to the recycling facility in Williston, and then the, the solid waste district takes it from there. There is here at the Materials Recovery Facility, or MRF, in Williston, where recyclables are collected, sorted, and sent to markets. It, once something hits that conveyor belt, it can go through this entire process in half an hour. The MRF, or the Materials Recovery Facility, um, was established in 1993 to handle all the recycling, the mandatory recycling, which is generated in Chittenden County. When I say mandatory recycling, because we have a solid waste ordinance that says certain items, like cardboard, office paper, aluminum, glass, um, metal cans, are required to be recycled and taken out of the trash. The Chittenden Solid Waste District offers a number of programs to companies and individuals throughout the county, from providing bins for compost and recycling to helping businesses set up or improve their recycling programs. On this day, members of the public gathered for a tour of the MRF. One of the things that surprised me the most was the fact that they will bundle up these recyclables and sell them, that it's not just going in your blue bin at home. This is a commodity. This is what makes people money. This is what keeps people working here. So we need to think a little bit more about what goes in our trash versus what gets put in the blue bin. The MRF was the first single stream facility in New England and remains the only one in Vermont. 
Morris says that in 2003, when residents were no longer required to separate their recycling, the rate of recovery in Chittenden County increased by 30 percent. There's become a lot more awareness of the importance of recycling, and it is market driven. So the more people are aware and feed recyclables into the market, the more that helps feed demand, but also as people buy materials that are made from recycled products, that closes the loop. Another way to close the loop is through education. And these bunkers under here are where the different materials are pulled off the sorting line the first time it goes through. To see the amount of waste coming in nonstop was very, uh, very eye-opening. David Thompson works at Colchester High School and attended the tour with a student who is working on a recycling program for his school. My student chose to uh, work in the recycling area and try to get people to be more aware of what they're throwing in the trash, especially students at our school. He's going to be getting um, separate containers for rooms in our schools and then um, making sure that, you know, sorting through them and everything and making sure that people know what goes in them. I think the more kids that can see this, the better, because that's, those are the people who are going to be doing this recycling for years and years and years and the earlier they get started doing it the better off the recycling facility will be able to to sell these recycled goods and the more recycled goods there will be to buy. At UVM the waste and recycling team have noticed the community's recent focus on composting and diverting food scraps. While those are key to a successful waste program Spiegel wants people to remember the basics. Recycling is pretty easy, especially in Chittenden County, so let's not lose sight of it. It's an easy thing that any individual can do. You don't have to retrofit you know, your house or invest a lot of money. That's already been done. You just have to participate in the system that's already there. They're doing a great job with their efforts to um, be a leader among universities in this movement, you know, that's, that's now kind of cool and everybody wants to jump on the bandwagon, but UVM's been doing it and walking the walk for a while now. The joke in my field is that our goal is to work ourselves out of a job. While Spiegel and her team are sure to remain employed for the foreseeable future, their efforts will continue to provide an example for others looking to waste less. In Burlington, I'm Rebecca Gollin with Across the Fence. Thanks, Rebecca. Well, joining me now is Erica Spiegel, the university's solid waste and recycle manager. Erica works in the physical plant, which is part of UVM's administrative and facility services department. Welcome to you, and thanks so much for being oh, with us. Thank you for having me, Judy. Uh, this is pretty exciting. How much does the university recycle, and what kinds of materials? Um, well, we have a comprehensive program which collects um, over a dozen materials to keep out of the landfill. Um, for example, some of the basic recyclables, like the ones you saw in the video, mm -hmm. would be uh, paper and bottles and cans. And we're lucky to have a facility like the uh, MRF, the mm -hmm. Material Recycling Facility in Williston, to handle that. But aside from that, we do collect um, food scraps from all of our dining halls. Um, we collect used cooking oil that goes to a facility in Winooski that makes biodiesel. Um, we have everything from scrap metal to scrap wood and pallets. Um, and even some construction and demolition waste. Okay. Just the university is like a small town. In fact, it's even bigger than some Vermont towns, and we have a variety of activities that create waste. Um, and, and so how do you know yeah. if the program's working? Well, we like to measure things mm -hmm. a lot. Um, we do weigh all the commodities that we um, can, and one of the simplest ways to measure is to look at our recycling rate or our diversion rate. Um, last year it was 36 percent, meaning 36 percent of all the material that we generated was kept out of the landfill. And that's a little bit more than the state average. They report 32 um, percent statewide. Um, another way to look at it is just the absolute tonnage of waste. Um, and as, as um, we saw in the video, it's actually been decreasing for the past five years, which is pretty remarkable uh, because at the same time the campus has been growing both in population and in square footage. Um, so for example, the, the reduction in the waste since 2005 um, is along with our student body, which has gone up by almost 3,000 students mm -hmm. and a half a million square feet. So there's a lot of buildings, a lot of activities, a lot of um, 
research happening, but at the same time our waste per capita has gone down. And I think that's really the good news story because we can talk a lot about recycling, mm -hmm. but it's even harder to talk about how do we just waste less overall. Can you give me some so, examples of that? How to waste less? Um, some of the things that you've yeah, seen? Yeah, well we, we certainly still do emphasize recycling. We try to make it convenient for everybody. We have bins all throughout the campus and I'm told by even one of our bus drivers that they put recycling bins on the, the buses this semester. Um, so you can't really go that far at UVM without seeing a recycling bin. Um, <clears throat> and we're also diverting food scraps from our, our dining halls. So um, we've been emphasizing recycling and composting for so long, it really takes sort of this mental shift in the, in the way we're thinking, sort of a paradigm shift to say, how do we start wasting less mm -hmm. and not always try to recycle more? Um, so a couple of ways we do that, like the, the simplest example would be, um, and it takes both individual behavior change and institutional policy change. The simplest example would be the coffee cup. So an institutional um, policy is that customers would get a discount if they bring their own cup to one of the places on campus. You can actually buy coffee at 11 places on, on mm -hmm. our campus. But if you have your own travel mug, you pay less. Yeah, so there's the individual behavior that has to participate um, as well as the institution providing that financial incentive to carry your own cup. Um, one of the things we're, we're really working on this semester with a student club is trying to promote a refillable bottles and um, for water because bottled yeah, water because, is a big you know, issue. You know bottled water is definitely prevalent in our culture right now. Um, so we've been g giving out um, a lot of bottled waters. We have this campaign called One Less Bottle and um, the drinking water fountains in our student center have been retrofit with spouts that make it a lot easier for students to, to refill, refill the their bottles. And it's um, been such a good idea that we're going forward, like all new drinking fountains on the campus are going to have that feature. So we just try to make it um, the infrastructure there to encourage less wasteful More um, user behavior. friendly for people yeah. who want to do that. Yeah. Um, another thing we're doing when it comes to food, I mean, it's great that we're collecting food for composting, but it would be better if we wasted less in the first place. Mm -hmm. So um, last year we implemented what's called tray-free dining. And Which I think is fantastic because when you ever think of cafeteria, it's always the tray. Yeah, so we, um, we actually worked with a nutrition and food science class that helped us do a pilot study where we measured the waste um, beforehand, and then we removed the trays, and then we measured the waste afterwards. And we found there was almost a 40% reduction in the amount of post-consumer food waste, meaning the stuff left on the trays, from the students. Um, so we convinced the dining management to say, let's do this system-wide. So in the three dining halls where it's um, what's known as a you know, all-you-care-to-eat plan, the students don't have a tray. So that eliminates piling on food that's but, just going to go right into the compost. Right, so people, if, if you're hungry again, you have to get up again and actually go get the food that you're thinking of. Um, yeah, and in general, it promotes healthier eating because people are eating, um, choosing a more manageable portion size, and if they want more, they can walk, you mm -hmm. know, a few steps <laughs> and get it. Kind of like at home, I, I point out to the students, you don't have a tray in your kitchen to get from the kitchen counter to the as dining As much as the table. children would love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so those are things where, you know, we change the way we deliver a service to the university and the individual behavior has to follow. And that's not that big of a stretch. Um, no, and you know, it's funny, like in people's personal lives, they tend to do, you know, take care of things themselves, but somehow at the university, they seem to think somebody else is going to do it for them. So one of the biggest behavior changes we implemented last, um, this past summer, was in our custodial services area. Um, there had been a standard where your little trash can by your desk was emptied every day at the university, and the custodial department um, had to come up with some efficiency improvements in their operation. So they said, we're not going to empty the trash anymore in offices. So all staff and faculty at all levels of the university, and I'm told even at the executive level, <laughs> they have to bring their trash from their desk at their office to a central spot in the hallway. Um, this has eliminated something like 30,000 plastic bags that were used in the process Incredible. of moving the trash. Um, but it also makes individuals more aware of what they're producing in their office each day. And if people are interested in learning more about these programs, Erica, is there a website that, that they can check out? 
Um, yeah, we have a, a website. It's uh, www.uvm.edu backslash recycle. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's our that explains more about what our program is doing. And also, two residents of Chittenden County can check out the site for the Solid Waste District, which is CSWD.net. And for statewide reduce and recycle information, that's available from the State Agency of Natural Resources, which is the third website listed on your screen. I want to thank you for joining me today. It sounds like things are going very well. Thank you for, for having me here. All righty. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. For a video copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-ATF-3430. Across the Fence is brought to you as a public service by University of Vermont Extension, the Vermont Agricultural Experiment Station, and WCAX-TV.